Settle down. Hey, everybody. <laughs> it's Carlos from Mortals, Inc. Podcast here. I got Mike on the mic. Mike on the mic. Is that the new thing now? I don't know. I still the only <laughs> I think thing we I said that every episode. Mike, no. I have a Michael on the uh, recording apparatus. Yes, that is me. And I got Travis here, one of the regular guys that shows up and talks about AKA stuff. AKA the Grumpy Wizard. The Grumpy Wizard. And uh, if you hadn't known, he's a actual writer. Yes. Publisher. All that good stuff. Anyway, we're here to talk about his new book. Is this your first one? That's my first one that I've published. It's not the first thing of mine that has been published. Oh, okay. I got confused. Anyway, we're going to do... <laughs> He's I've, got, it's, I've, written, uh, I've written for other things. <laughs> for other people's stuff. <laughs> Hogwater, Village of Secrets. And from the cover, these cute little pigs are not eating jam in the corner. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Don't ban us for that. All right, YouTube. Travis, tell us about your... Uh, Tell us what this is. Hogwater is a sandbox campaign starting location. Uh, it has, it's a village where you would introduce your players to the location. It has non-player characters, factions. So there's bundled into groups that have a uh, common interest, uh, the peasants, the craftsman of the town, the Lord and his men at arms and, and uh, retainers. There's a group of outlaws. Uh, there's a druid around town and, and all these different individual groups and non-player characters have a set of goals that they're trying to accomplish themselves. And the players would show up and either help one group and work against another or uh, go back and forth between different groups, depending on what happens. So the village is supposed to, is really intended to feel like when players show up your standard ye old fantasy village. So like how, how big a bit, how many people? 250 you people. Oh, okay. In the village. So fairly sized, good village. And like a and starting location. Yeah. It's a starting location. It has all the basic stuff that a starting location needs for a sandbox campaign. So first level. Yeah. Okay. First level. But the, the, the sort of the kicker of it is, is that as the players interact with, non-player characters and there's a couple small adventure sites that i've also written and thrown in there that are all interconnected back with the non-player characters and the factions in the game or the setting things secrets and clues about what's sort of the undercurrent of what's going on in the town get revealed a piece at a time oh so that's why it's a village of secrets. Yes. <laughs> right. I guess. So there's so there's different characters, different non-player characters in the town that have uh, ulterior motives. They have things that they're trying to accomplish that they're not broadcasting out in public. But there are clues because of what they do and there's things that happen out in some of the adventure sites around town that kind of tell you oh wait, things are not quite what they think they are. And so what it's intended to do is really to subvert some of the assumptions that a, that a sort of jaded old school player might have. Go, oh, I know what this is. I've been to a place like this before. Oh, wait, wait a minute. There's something else going on oh, here. So it's like a, a first level. Say you start a new campaign. It's a first level. Say, yes. Hey, this is a good village for like a starting location. So right. Like you guys right. are all low level and, Hey, you're from, you're, you know, you're from the village of Hogwater or, or you're tra I, the way I've set it up is that you're traveling to traveling it to it because it's on a borderland region in a, where a collapsed civilization once was, and there's dungeons and other adventure oh. sites nearby. So like what I wanted it to be a thing so that a, a game master, a lot of times game masters will start a campaign and they'll have a handful of adventure modules that they've either bar bought or something they found online, or they've came up with an idea for a dungeon and they've written it, but they don't really want to mess with having the town around it. And they so they'd sort of like hand wave a lot of the town stuff, oh, they, or yeah, they I, use or they use random account or they use random generators or something like that. And it's I, not and it's not very co coherent. I am very I'm guilty of that because I, I had like when I run a campaign I'll have all these great adventures. I see what you're saying, and then like wherever they meet just to go get food or clean yeah. up or whatever. I kind of like half half acid for lack right. of that better word. Right. So, so like so, so this I've would done, be. I've done all that legwork, all the all the hard effort of 
creating non-player characters. This is where they go to get food. This is where they go to stay at night. Here are people that can provide them with new armor, equipment, or whatever. Here's with- And then it also, I've also built into it so it's open-ended so that there's several characters that uh, provide information. So the, like the innkeeper uh, has... It's a, it's on a sort of a trade route. So there's a lot of merchants that pass through. Mm-hmm. So the innkeeper would obviously be a guy who's hearing stories about people finding out about stuff in town, or you have a woodsman who a guy who cuts firewood uh, and log and timber and stuff who lives outside of town. So it's like, Hey, I saw this monster or whatever. The so other they would day. be, they would be good characters or good NPCs where, if you have a, an adventure you want them to go on, they could relay that to them. And Correct. Yeah, okay, all that work's done for you. Very good. And then on top of it, it has its own little adventures built into it, like a yes. undercurrent of right. secrets, as you would say. And then it also has, I also included a few elements to, if you have a bigger campaign setting and you want to connect other places in that campaign setting back to Hogwater or characters in Hogwater, uh, there's ways of doing that too. So it's a very open-ended, it's a, it's a, a little space that seems relatively complete in and of itself, but also allows you to expand your campaign based on what your players are interested okay. in. So that's not, a yeah. Bad. So there's already stuff that's gonna happen, but it, yes. it's going on that, yes. that, that will happen, but it's up. It, there's others. It's just so much going on. It's brilliant. It's like a yep. fuller point. Or the other, I, I see what you're saying. You're kind of, inter, this can be interwoven into any ongoing campaign that you yes. have. Like you could just dump it right in there. Right. You could either use it as a starting point for a campaign or if you have a campaign going on and you're like, I need a town or something for these guys to show up in. Cause I, I'm thinking like, I can drop I, it in there. Like I already know, like the campaigns I usually run, I have certain adventures, like big ones that I like to run, especially right. with new people. And it's like th- that already I'm thinking, oh, I could use this to either where they started or they got to after that first initial. Correct. Like yeah. th- the example I would give, and I'll just be simple. I, I love uh, 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 Forgotten, uh, that unknown, the B1, B4. Right. Yep. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Mm-hmm. And it's like you're stuck in the desert and that's where you start. When you yes. get out of the right. desert, you wander away. You know, you finally get yourself out of the desert. To me, I would be like, oh, well, Hogwater, that's where you find, that's where you finally get out and mm-hmm. it's on the edge of civilization and then saying, okay, that would be a good thing. And then they could branch out from there. You know, they still have a link to their old adventure. They, you know, then they have all these links to the new one. Along I'm, with I'm some sure it gets stuff. so deep. I'm sure it gets so, so deep. Yeah. Um, it, 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 well, because of the size of the village, it's manageable. Yeah. So there, are, you know, it's there's not the city. Like it's, it's not, yeah, it's not a big know, city. Yeah. Like it's not you know, something Baldur's like Baldur's Gate. And you're yeah, like, you know, you got to memorize thirty NPCs just to walk across the street. You know, yep. you know, there's no. Well, and the other thing about that is is which was really important for me. I wanted to make it a useful tool for for uh, a game master. So I created um, reference sheets for each of the factions in the book. Uh, so there's the peasant faction and they have their own sheet and it has, it tells you uh, what the peasants as a faction want, what their problems are, what kind of resources they have and what they're doing about it. And just very short, like bullet list kind of pr- presentation, manageable, very manageable. So all you got to do is just, you can look, flip to their, you, they go, Oh, they're talking to a peasant. I flip to my peasant sheet. Oh, and I can just look at it and immediately that's, know that's what. what I like that because, like, we were talking earlier. Like, sometimes they'll have like these adventures they write. They're just so grandiose, and each individual character has its own motivation. Right. It's like you got them. That would be nice to say. Okay, let me go talk to the peasants. You know, and it's like, hey, it's a bunch of guys down at you know yes. the tavern. You know what their problems are, and it's really simple. And yeah, you know what questions it. to ask. Yeah, it's like, hey guys, and then if you want to have one standout guy, you could make that standout guy. There and is then, yes, there is a there is a uh, random peasant generator in there. <laughs> so there's I, I do have for all the factions. There's, Bring me a poor person. No. <laughs> there's a there is a uh, for each of the factions. There's notable figures within the faction Mm -hmm. and then uh for the factions that have large numbers like the vagabonds who are basically like migrant laborers yeah yeah uh, 
who live in this little hovel town outside of Hogwater. Uh, there's a generator for just random guys, and he would use those as henchmen and meat shields for dungeons as well. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're written for that purpose as well. <laughs> Bring me uh, a meat shield. <laughs> uh, they're like, oh, who's a guy who's going to be willing to work for three pints of ale a day? We're going to go out here and get one <laughs> of those like, guys. You sacrifice I, this guy. I think there's two guys in right. the store so right now. Dude. <laughs> so I have a so I have a gen, I have generators in there that you just roll four or five d twenties. Look at the column. Write down the you know ten words, and you've got a you've got a NPC in a matter of seconds. Uh, if you need one, there's there's several generators like that, but there's also the notable NPCs that are that show up on on the reference sheets. Is this uh, system specific or no? It is set up. I have written it for Swords and Wizardry. Okay. If you play something like Old School Essentials or uh, just one of the old versions of Basic D and D or Advanced D and D, it'll work fine. It, you won't have any trouble. Is a good background it. for like any like? Could you like if you had a D and D fifth edition, if you were to insert stuff in there yeah if you if you were willing is it to good do for the, ideas for like those yeah yeah that's, detailed. That, that's one of the other things about it that i think is useful is that you could strip ideas out of it yeah there, there's a, a couple there is one full adventure in there that i wrote for third level characters it's an investigative adventure it has timelines and oh so split then up that, yeah encounters. that doesn't even need like a whole lot right. of stat yeah as long as you as long as you can generate the stat blocks for the the um monsters and npcs in whatever yeah, system you not... want and you feel comfortable doing that and i think that, it's uh, not that hard to convert and i didn't make anything like super weird or any out anything out there it's it's kind of a bit generic -y, vanilla fantasy um simply because a lot of people like that and but this is makes it familiar but different because you have all these strange things kind of going on under the surface of the uh of the adventure or the setting. And you said you wanted to eliminate that cliche of like, oh, I know what's going to happen. And then yep. something actually, you know, other than that happens. Right. What was the inspiration behind that? Um, you without, know, without giving it away. Well, yeah. there's, there's just uh, a concept and fiction writing of familiar, but different where you, you take a, you think about a film that had a surprising twist ending where you think, oh, you think it's this guy, but it actually turns out to be this other guy, or this guy is doing something I totally didn't expect him to be doing. Uh, like I a, think that's just a fun. I think that's a fun uh, way to go about creating adventures. It's yeah, like taking, looking at a monster or a spell or a magic item, and thinking about what are all the different ways somebody could use and abuse this that. I've not seen before. And, you know, I like to do a lot of brainstorming where I'll just write down a list of ideas uh, as fast as I can without, you know, judging them at all. And then I'll go back and look through and I go, oh, that's interesting. Like what if, if you had a first level wizard with a sleep spell and a peasant village, what could that guy do with that or a charm spell? <laughs> In a, in a, <laughs> nothing good obviously <laughs> right so Think you start the box. so you start thinking about ways that certain spells or magic items or oh, or, or monsters the implications of those things beyond the the sort of cliche normal ways of looking at them and what you end up with is some pretty there's a lot of there's a lot of ways to combine those different things together too as you go if you have uh you know, for example, there's a peasant that has a pretty powerful magic item in, in hog water and he uses it to his advantage and it really p makes a problem for the rest of the villagers um, and it makes a problem for the Lord and everybody else in, in town too. Uh, and there's no, there's nothing in the rule book that says this guy can't have this or couldn't use it. That's awesome. So then, cool. so then you start to think, you know, he's, he's easily killed, but he also has a position of importance within the town. So if you were to figure out, oh, well, I see what this guy's doing, I'm going to kill him. Oh, but wait, the Lord who happens to be a 10th level fighter with a pile of magic armor and weapons yeah, well, 
doesn't like it when you do that. Doesn't like when you <laughs> kill his peasants. Yeah, <laughs> right. And that's cool because you could literally like you and like we could all be, we could see that happen in real time. Like, not nope, not worry about it. And you could kind of choose your own destiny, right? In yes, a way. and that's, that's oh, yeah, you could totally ignore that problem. Yeah, you could. Yeah, I got my own problems. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and well, you come back <laughs> and that problem's worse. <laughs> yeah, yep. right. and that's that's, what I that's find cool a about lot that. of what that is built around. Is there's a lot of these little problems that players can either ignore or engage with, uh, decide, and then I wrote a mechanic that I also put in there that slots into Swords and Wizardry for reputation. So if your player, if the players do something for a particular faction, they get a little bonus in uh, oh, reaction right. roles to um, in, uh, moments with those. Oh, nice. It's like, a, it's like a status type of thing. Yes, correct. So what do we got? We got these are what twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. Twenty bucks. And available here. Travis just put some copies on the shelf. I don't know if you want to maybe uh, talk about. You know, maybe you gave a little signature oh, yes. in those. Oh, I, yeah, he threw uh, a signature in there for us. Yep, I autographed so. them, and I also I think put uh, cards with them. Yeah, there's a card. If you buy one, you get a card and it, it's uh, you can get a PDF copy of this too for yes. free. All you and do the is, PDF uh, copies are all uh, annotated, so if you're reading through it and there's a character that comes up, you click on it and it hyperlinks over to the full character description. Wow. So you put some time into it. Yep. Put a lot of time into it. So anyway, we got these on the shelf. Uh, come on down. And Congratulations, Travis. Thank you. It's really cool. Pick one up and... Uh, We'll see you again. Thanks, Travis. Bye. You're welcome. Thanks.